I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this lion applique block. The pattern is available at shinyhappyworld.com. Just look in the quilt patterns, or if you're looking at this on YouTube, if you look in the description below, you'll see a link to get the pattern. And if you're looking at watching the video on Shiny Happy World, there will be a link in the blog post with it showing you where to get the pattern. But it's at shinyhappyworld.com and with all of the other quilt patterns. Here's how to make them. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to start by rough cutting all of the pieces and fusing them to the back of your fabric. And by rough cutting, I mean you're not gonna cut right on the lines. You're gonna leave a little bit of extra all the way around. And anywhere where there's a dotted line, you wanna leave a little extra extra. Those are pieces that are going to tuck underneath other pieces. So you can see for this lion, we have this is the main piece. We've got his shoulders and his mouth and his face all done from one fabric. From the black fabric, I've got the nose and the eyes. And then from a slightly lighter colored fabric, I've got the muzzle pieces for the little cheeks on him. The next step is going to be to clean cut, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, here's how we put this guy together. So first of all, I wanted to show you, this is the clean cut. And you can see, let me pull this up close enough and get it still in focus. Where there's a solid line, I cut right on the line. And where there's a dotted line, I left a little bit extra. And that is where pieces are going to tuck underneath other pieces. So we're going to start here. Oh, I should mention, I've got an already quilted block here. I just quilt the front, the, the background block, to the batting. I don't put the backing on until after I have quilted, appliqued, outlined, trimmed, and sewn together all of the other blocks. So we have an already quilted block here, and I'm going to lay the shoulder pieces in place first. And I'm going to position them so that they are, um, the bottom edge is lined up with the raw edge of the block. Now, before I peel off the paper backing, I need to make sure that I've transferred any markings that I need from the front. And again, I'm gonna pull this up close so that we can see. You can see that I've traced the whisker lines because I'm gonna sew directly on those lines. So I've traced the whisker lines and I've done just a little outline with a white pencil uh, because I didn't want any black lines to show through the face piece that I put down there. Um, so I've marked the position of the face and also the little muzzle pieces in there. So now we're going to lay those in place. So I'm just peeling off the paper backing. And this isn't exact, well, this is exactly where that's going to go. There it goes. So you can see I outlined, I laid it overlapped just a little bit over the shoulders on that guy. Now I'm going to lay the face in place. And before I peel off the paper backing on the face, I wanted to show you that I marked the position of the eyes and also these lines for the sides of the nose because I'm going to stitch those lines on there as well. And again, you can see that uh, I cut directly on the solid line around the face, but I left a little bit extra uh, where it's going to tuck behind those little muzzle pieces. So there is the face roughly put in place. Now I'm going to do these little muzzle pieces, and I also traced the whisker lines on these and those whisker lines are going to do two things it's going to give me a line to sew on when i do my uh, top stitching but they also show me where they line up with the whisker lines that i traced on the main piece so now i've gotten those whisker lines all lined up and now I know I've got that exactly where it needs to be placed. I'm going to do the same thing with the muzzle on the other side of the face. I'm going to get that all lined up. So now those muzzle pieces are put in place. And now I should have done the little mouth. I'm going to do that 
going to just tuck that underneath the muzzle pieces. So I'm going to hold these in place and tuck this mouthpiece underneath them. And now just make sure that I didn't shift those at all. And I did that one a little bit. There they go. Get that back in place. Okay, now all of those whiskers are lined up and the top edges of the, the, the top edges of the chin are covered up by the muzzle pieces. Now I'm going to attach, to lay in place the nose and that is going to overlap the top edges of the muzzle piece and the corners of my nose are going to line up with those stitching lines that I'm going to do when I do outlining all of the pieces. So now all that's left are a couple of eyes. So I've got one eye. And now one more eye. There that is. And I'm looking at this and I'm realizing that this muzzle piece is supposed to overlap that muzzle piece. So I'm going to lift this up and put it back down. It didn't look quite right there. Now it's perfect. So I'm going to take this and take it over to the ironing board and I'm going to fuse it in place. I'm going to follow the instructions on the package of fusible adhesive that I use. I use heat and bond light, so those are the instructions that I'm going to follow. You'll want to follow the instructions for whatever brand of paperbacked fusible adhesive you use. So I'm going to fuse that down. I'm going to let it cool on the ironing board and then I'm going to outline all the pieces and I will bring it back here and show you and talk you through all of that outline stitching that I do after I get that done. Okay, here he is with all of his stitching done and I'm just going to talk you through quickly how I do the outline stitching so that I can minimize, generally I'm trying to minimize how many times I have to stop and start. And one thing I'm going to show you, let me pull this up so you can see it closer. I go around each piece three times and I'm deliberately trying not to stitch directly on my line because I want to see the different times around. I want this to look like uh, a little bit like it's straight out of my sketchbook. So I'm trying to get um, actually not exactly on my lines because I want to see the multiple lines. So. I start just inside the body here. My first thing is to go around the main. So I start just inside the body and I go around once, twice, and three times. And then I continue on, just overlap a little bit there, and then I do this side of his shoulders. One, two, three. Then I go across the bottom, and that's not going to be seen because this part is going to be covered up in my seam allowance, so this is just a little shortcut there. And then I go one, two, three, and tie it off. So that's the mane and the shoulders done. The next thing I start doing is around the face and these whiskers. So I start inside the nose. I usually like to start with whatever's sitting the most on top. So the nose is on top of the muzzle pieces which are on top of the face. So I'm going to start with the nose and I started in the middle of this side here. And I went around the nose once and I usually, if it's the black spaces like the nose and the eyes, I just go around them one time because you can't see the multiple lines of stitching anyway. So I went around the nose once and then I went around this muzzle here because it overlaps this one a little bit. So I went once, twice, and three times and then I went up this side of the nose. One, two, three, and I tied it off. Then I hopped over here and started a new line of stitching it went one, two, three, down that side of the nose, and then I did this side of the muzzle. One, came back just past the mouth and just did a quick one, two, three, four across the mouth, and then picked up here for a second time around this muzzle, and then a third time, and then tied it off inside the nose. 
The whiskers, unfortunately, there's no cheater pants way to do this without stopping and starting at either end. So I just start on the inside and I go one, two, three and tie off. Start here, one, two, three and tie off. The last thing, well, I did around the eyes, just once around each eye. And then the last thing is to do around the face. So I started here and I went once, twice, and a third time and tied off here. And that is the face entirely stitched with as little stopping and starting as I could figure out how to work in there. So here is a lion done in fairly traditional colors, but I wanted to show you also that lion, if you'll remember back at the beginning, we did the lion in non-traditional colors. And I showed you the pieces for this blue lion. So now I just want to show you that guy all finished up. So this is a lion in blues. You could do any rainbow colors that you wanted to for um, really you could, all kinds of crazy fantasy lions. They would be super, super cute. Uh, done. Everything else is done exactly the same way. So that's how you make the lion block. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. Happy stitching!